almost done, Ray. Look, you touch that thing one more time, you're gonna wear a hole in it. Well, any job worth doing is worth doing well, Ray. You're protecting rocks, Frazier. They're not just rocks, Ray. They are transformation masks. Hand-carved basalt, over a thousand years old. You know, the Shimshin people used them in a winter ceremony to pray that the gods would return the sun to them in the spring. Yeah, well, they give me the creeps. Well, you should stop looking at them. They're looking at me. You know, it's interesting you should say that, because that's what they're intended to do. You see, the inner mask has its eyes open, and the outer mask has its eyes closed, and they interlock, one inside the other. It's the only matching set in existence. Yeah, well, that's great. Can we go now? Frazier. Coming. Frazier. Coming. Yep. In 1879, the masks were confiscated by an Anglican priest named Duncan, who had been sent to convert to Shimshin. And as was the custom in those days, he took their religious symbols from them. He later sold the masks to two separate countries, and they're finally being reunited after more than 100 years. So, it's a, an important moment of history for both Canada and France, not to mention the political, cultural, and religious significance it holds for the North American native peoples. And? Well, they're worth over a million dollars. Oh, now you're talking. The car is this way. It was the summer I spent at the Sorbonne. I was young and a trifle naive, I'm afraid. Yes, but what artist model isn't? Do you still have the sketches? Yes, sir. What is it, Fraser? Uh, I, I've completed my inspection of the security systems. I've checked the motion detectors, the emergency backup system, the pressure plates, and examined the perimeter of the building. Twice. Fine. Carry on. Uh, may I introduce Detective Vecchio? Mr. Robinson is the museum's curator, and I believe you know Inspector Thatcher. Hello, Mr. Robinson. Police. Uh, constable. The museum has a well-deserved reputation for top-notch security, I think, that we have it covered. Yes, sir, still. Thank I... you, Fraser. I think we should let Mr. Robinson get home to his family. Well, that would be a long drive. My parents live in Pensacola. Really? I love Pensacola. Where is that exactly? <sighs> I think she wants him. For what? They'll still be there in the morning. Come on. Moving in. Can you see that shame? I'm feeling change as you roll on down the line. When the show fires burn out on a new frontier. With the past on the haunt you, and there's nothing else to fear. Baby, don't you hold out too long. Dragon Lady and Mr. Museum Guy. Oh, she must be desperate. There's nothing we can't hold, nothing we can't be. They've taken everything, and what do they put back? They don't really give a damn, because there's nothing here that we lack. Baby, don't you hold okay. out too long. They might not set you. Got 
Yes, I fell. You fell? Yes, Ray, I fell. Oh, no, you see, that just doesn't make any sense, because Mounties don't just fall. They leap, they bound, they grandjete, but they don't just fall. I think I knew him. Who, the thief? Yes. And you got a good look at him while you were dangling there? Well, no, Ray, of course not. The truth is, I'm not sure exactly what it was I saw. got your picture out on the wire. Sooner or later, it's going to come back with a name and a place. And you would have wasted a great deal of this detective's time, and in the process, made him very angry. So why don't you make it easy on yourself? I told you, I came to see a Blackhawks game. You know, the museum's a funny place to be catching a game. Your partner took the masks and left you hanging there. And why are you protecting? I got nothing to say. Oh, Ray, tell you something. Ray, 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 Ray. <sighs> He's right. There's nothing you can do for us. So there's nothing we can do for him. Well, uh, the Max City? So what was that? Some form of secret Canadian you only speak to one another? Shimshin. Oh, that was going to be my next guess. I'm a little rusty, but he seemed to understand what I meant. Well, there you are. You were right. He's Canadian. Uh, one misdemeanor, charges dropped. David Katikmit is his name, from Nakina. Nakina. That's Canadian, Elaine, for frozen or cold or maybe even tundra. Thank you kindly, Elaine. Not so fast. Well, she wants to see you. You've got uh, visitors. Mr. Champ is here representing the French government and Mrs. Kelly, the Canadian. The masks? Uh, nothing to report, sir. You uh, weren't able to apprehend the thief? No, sir, I'm afraid not. That's not good enough, is it? No, sir, it's not. Look, he grandjetted 50 feet off that roof trying to get that guy. He's lucky to be alive. Of course. Nice shirt. Yes, well, you uh, caught me changing. I'm sure we did. We are currently interrogating a suspect, a Canadian citizen that we apprehended at the museum. May I? Are they all this polite? He's native. Yes, he is. That makes sense. 
Lieutenant, my government is very concerned. You see, we have received demands by the Canadian Aboriginal people for the return of our half of the mask. As has our own government. Meaning? It's a Shimshin religious symbol, sir, and apparently they would like it back. It's understandable. But irrelevant. They sold it to us. And us. Well, that would appear to be a matter of considerable dispute. Really? Needless to say, if the masks are not recovered by the gala opening on Saturday... I trust you can put aside your many open cases and give this one your complete, undivided attention. Most definitely, sir. I thought so. Thank you for your cooperation, Lieutenant. My pleasure. We'll discuss this later. I'm sure we will, sir. Lieutenant. Lieutenant. Detective Vecchio. I trust you will grant the French all the courtesy that you extend here to the Canadians. Of course. Thank you. Au revoir. Au revoir. Women 101. Learn at least one word in every foreign language. Understood. Vecchio! For this one, vamanos. Freeze, detective. Ray, would you? Uh, coward. Louise, did I tell you how good you look in green? Now, if this is about our date on Saturday night... My office tells me that you have a minor child in custody against all good sense and logic. Oh, come on, he's no counsel. choir boy, Could Louise. you please explain this to me, detective? And please also tell me that you are not actually interrogating him under these circumstances? Louise. Thank you. Well, since he's 17 and Juvie's full, Child welfare is going to take him to a temporary shelter. St. Laurent made a deal with the public defender to peddle him until charges are laid tomorrow. Consideration of the conversation that we did not have with him. He'll disappear. Yeah, well, we don't have a lot of choice. It's out of our hands. All right, come on. So what happens now? Child welfare gets comfortable, turns on the cable, and we spend the rest of the night out here on our bunions, that's what. It's a waste of time. I'll take them to social work. I'll take David. You all right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm all right.
I was wondering when you'd get here, Monty. I was wondering when you would show up. Hello, Eric. David is young and idealistic. When we heard that the mask would be brought together and David and another Shimshian boy disappeared from their village, I knew where he would go. This Thunderbird is a symbol of a warrior society that is calling our youth together. Nowadays, when youth feel the power of the spirit, they are not patient and willing to leave things to the elders or the proper authorities. They will take things into their own hands. It was you, wasn't it? Me? On the roof of the museum. What took you to the roof of a museum? A thief. David's friend, Joshua Springer, perhaps. I don't think so. It was you. I was here. You can ask your wolf. Oh. It was you. I heard a story once. It tells of a man who became a raven and went to Skywalk to steal the sun. Raven stole the sun and brought it back to his people so they can have light. But this left Skyworld blind. Perhaps it was a raven you saw on a roof. No. It was a man that I saw on the roof. And I'm going to find him. You will? Yes, I will. And then I will arrest him. And I will return the masks. I'm going to find my nephew, David. And I'm going to return the masks. And we both seek the same thing. Maybe I can help you. David left the trail of credit card charges behind him. Good. So we understand each other. So this is where you sleep. Well, yes. You're welcome to stay. It's a bit. Cramped. It's not that bad. And once you get used to it. You've changed, Monty. <laughs> I've changed? I'll be cut to here. <laughs> Finally, I thought you was going to sleep all day. Six in the morning. What are they doing here? Cooking. Did you invite them? They're my family. I could hardly keep them away. Ah, Victoria, Albert, it's, it's been quite a long time. Hello, Fraser. Are you all right? Yes, I'm quite fine, thank you. Huh. I brought a TV. I hope you don't mind. We don't want to miss our programs. No, please, make, make yourselves at home. Chicago doesn't seem to have a very good selection. I was unaware of that. Um, We're just happy to be here, Fraser. And why are you here? Mm. We were worried about David. And I've always wondered about the architecture here. Ah. Have you found him? No, but we are looking. Well, you wasted half a day. Breakfast? No, thank you. I'm, I'm already quite full. Let's go. Eric, I, uh... <clears throat> I have to confess to, to feeling a little bit of embarrassment. Regarding my incompetence as a host, uh, not to mention some real concerns about overcrowding. I guess none of us figured on your apartment being so small. Good thing Sarah and Patty didn't come. Those two girls can pack light if their house was on fire. All right, <clears throat> well, let's call Ray. We left our shoes in the hall. I'm sure that we'll be fine. 
Thanks for leading them the guidebook. Ray, <clears throat> this is Eric from the territories. He's here to help us look for David and his friend. And he may be able to offer us some assistance in finding the masks. Yeah, Eric. David rented a car in Chicago using a stolen credit card. Oh, yeah, I know where this place is. It's on the south side. Frazier, there's black smoke coming out of your apartment. Not to worry. Let's go. Not to worry? It's a cooking fire, Ray. It's completely harmless. Believe it or not, there's an entire family of Chimchin living up there. Yeah, what are they trying to elect the Pope? Let's see what we got here. Bellissimas. Nah, nah, too expensive. I don't want her to think I'm trying to impress her, which I am, but we don't want her to think that. Uh, Ray, pedestrian, where? Whoa. Thanks. Who is the she you refer to? Uh, St. Laurent. State's attorney, St. Laurent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking her out to dinner on Saturday night. Huh? Eric, could you hold the wheel for me? Thanks. Oh, Bellardi's. Thank you. Nah. Uh, I go there too often. If it doesn't work out, I won't be able to go back there for a couple of weeks. What do you mean, if it doesn't work out? Oh, you know how it is with women. When they tell you nothing fancy, pick me up at eight, dress casual, what they really mean is, you better do it up first class and break the bank at every turn, or they're going to fit you with goat's horns. You know what I'm saying. Remind me to ask you later. I have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, here, Benny, do me a favor. You pick one out. Crabs and things. Would you give that to Eric, please? Hey, how about the loose moose? You guys know nothing about whining and dining women. Eric, hold the wheel. Cops? Cool. Look, I need you to look up a rental that was made using this credit card number. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I remember this guy. Uh, Indian. Uh, medium height, dark hair, rented a white midsize. Very polite. <laughs> Canadian driver's license. You got a Chicago address? Uh, the real one or the one he gave me? You want to expand on that? Well, I'm pretty sure the one he gave me was made up. But uh, when he pulled out his credit card, there was a receipt from the rooming house. So I put both the addresses in the computer. Sneaky. I like that. Uh, excuse me. If the information he gave you regarding his address was false, would it not follow that the information he gave you vis-a-vis -vis his intention to pay for the car or return said vehicle would also be false? Give us the second address. 845 Dearness Street. Line little clerk. Well, your pal David's probably sitting somewhere laughing at us right about now. We're never going to find him. Let's have a look. Been stripped. Oh, on the contrary, Ray. Just have to know what to look for. Hamburger. Oh. All right. Special sauce. McDonald's, his favorite. Really? Because I was hoping this trail of evidence would lead us to Wendy's. Frazier, look. Hey, yes. Excellent preservation. What? You don't see it? No, what? What is it? A footprint. Well, how do you know it's his? Mucklucks leave. Odd indentations. Not as odd as a res runner, though. No, those are tough. But you know, I figure with the mucklucks, his size, his weight, the wear on his soles, his knees are slightly bowed since birth. Oh, come on. There must be a hundred footprints here. You mean to tell me there's not one car stripper in this neighborhood with bowed knees? Ray, please. The man knows what he's doing. Special sauce. It's him. I don't believe this. We're tracking a Happy Meal. Let me guess, french fries? No. Yes, of course. I would have missed it. You're still sharp, Frazier. So what was it? Apple pie, chicken nuggets? Oh, David ditched the car, doubled back. Then he went inside. Eric missed it. Why is this my life? Mounties, bulls, chimshin. Second on the right. 
Thank you kindly. All right, beat it. I hope this doesn't take too long. I got reservations to make. Please, open up. Do we need a warrant? No, I'll let him explain it. You see? None required. David was here. Yeah, the kid travels light. The second boy from David's village? Joshua Springer? Joshua Springer. Doesn't need much, does he? Apparently. Look what I found. That was easy. Yes, very. I'm sure you must feel very conflicted right now. But I want you to know, because of your efforts, thousands of people are going to be able to share in the beauty of those masks. Thank you. Would they pay? What, admission? Yes, of course, 350. Why? Oh, just doing some math. This is very exciting. I'll call Ottawa. I've already taken care of that. The newspaper should be told. Already done. And the French government? I'll leave that to you. Thank you. How do you know? I just know. Yes, but how? Well, how does anyone know anything, right? You just, you know. Good work, Constable. I hope so, sir. Uh, sir, regarding the masks, is the curator quite satisfied? Yes. And Mrs. Kelly and Ms. Duchamp? Absolutely. And yourself, sir? I don't want to hear this, do I? No. Constable Fraser believes it was too easy. Ah, he does. Well, yes, sir. And I believe that if we were to bring in a native expert, someone who is impartial... There are no impartial natives when it comes to these masks, Fraser. Why don't I suggest a more constructive use of your time? Sell these. Tickets? To the opening night gala. You have a table to sell. Get cracking. Yes, sir. How much? $100 a ticket. Wow. Party, huh? Yeah, black tie, 100 a plate. That's 350 admission. Now, looks like we got a boat. We're late. We'd better hurry. There'll be a lineup. A lineup? Sweat lodge, Ray. There's a sweat lodge in your apartment? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Garcia? Miss Chris Drabalov? Thank you, Captain Line. Did you find David? No. Did you find the masks? Yeah. No. Time's up. Hey, Fraser. Love your guests. Can I borrow this later? Of course. They built a sauna in your living room. Sweat lodge. Mike, there's a difference? Oh, yes. A sauna eases tired muscles. The purpose of sweat. For spiritual purification. Well, there's no way I'm getting purified. I'm not going to take my clothes off, sit in 100 degree heat, surrounded by other people's sweat. Sarah's gone with Albert, and I need a pardon. Okay, so where do I change? I remember you almost fainted the first time I brought you into one of these. I was 10. You were scrawny then. I still am. But you can still move fast.
Are you guys finished? Because Patty and I are ready to sweat. You robbed me of a very important spiritual moment back there, Fraser. I saw Eric in a vision, Ray. No, what you saw was a dancing man and a big black bird. Where I come from, this is not called a vision. The bird is the raven. The raven is the trickster. The trickster came to return the masks to the Shimshin people. Ravens do not break into museums. No, they don't, but Eric did. Eric is the trickster. But what he discovered is that the masks were fake. Now, he knew if he led me to the fakes, I would in turn lead him to the real ones. Oh, so that's what we're doing. Because it's all part of his game. Great. So, now, we're playing his game and you're tracking by vision. Yes. Normally, that would be cause for concern. But seeing that we don't have any hard evidence or any real clues, dreaming some up might not be such a bad idea. Well, we at least have this much rain. If the masks he took were fakes, then someone must have stolen the real ones and replaced them. Oh, that would require a forger. Yes, it would. Do you know any forgers? Yeah. Can we go and talk to them? Sure. Would you like to do that now? Perfect. This was your friend's only suggestion? This is Chicago, Fraser. Not a lot of call for forgers who carve in volcanic rock. That door is ajar. Yes. Not a good sign. I didn't kill him. Tell it to the judge. Excuse me, what? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. You cannot afford your attorney. Thousands of dollars of art is stolen every year and finds its way into private collection. But for every dollar stolen, there's 10 forgeries hanging in galleries all over the world. Even experts at the Louvre have purchased such fakes. Can I smoke? No. And what about the masks? All I can tell you is this. When I left Paris, the French half of the mask was very and definitely real. So what's with all the cloak and dagger stuff? <laughs> when I uh, saw that Constable Frazier was working with the Chimshin, I I felt it was my government's best interest to find out where his allegiances rested. Allegiance is based on trust. You don't appear to be a very trusting person, Mr. Duchamp. Appearances can be deceiving. All right, let's cut through the bull. You killed the forger. I did not. I did not kill him. No. You just dropped by to take his pulse. Thank you. Ballistics. The bullet that killed him was a 45. She had a 9 mil. No match. Time of death? Between noon and 1. Thanks. Hey, Benny. She didn't kill him. I know. Look at her. You have a French citizen with diplomatic community in there being interviewed, and I have a very angry French official in my office. Now tell me, what do these two things mean to you? Just another opportunity to see your lovely face, Louise? It's all yours. Thank you. What's the catch? Oh, Louise, I'm hurt. Just wait till tomorrow night. Hey, Benny! How did you know? OK, so if it wasn't her, then who was it? No, 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 don't tell me. The curator. No, he may be guilty of a forgery and of switching the masks, but he's not the killer. David, he's an activist. Oh, he's a thief. He's not a killer. Well, Eric. No, no, he was in a sweat lodge with us. There's nobody else. Well, actually, there is.
Change of plan. I'm leaving tonight. The Canadian? The Canadian is the killer? Oh, that is so un-Canadian. This time tomorrow, we'll be rich. You have something that doesn't belong to you! I don't want to hurt anybody. I believe she already has, Ray. Quiet. Sorry. Get the case, please. Over there. I'm afraid those masks don't belong to you. Do they, Eric? I'm glad you agree. What about the other guy? There was no other guy. There was no Joshua Springer, was there? No. No. It was only you and David. Those are my masks! Maybe you haven't changed. No, I haven't. Let's do Gapla. Ian! Gapla! We're good. Now we all know where we stand. Drop the gun, Eric, or I'm gonna have to shoot you. I think you got your hands full, American. Give me the gun. I'll return the masks, and perhaps the governments involved won't prosecute. I think that's highly unlikely. All right, well, let's explore another option. You kill me, you take the masks, and you escape. Now, that's a plan, too. I shot a caribou once. The next time I looked, he turned into a man. You saved my life. I was grateful. And now, now you may have to shoot me. Wewa, Benga. Let me guess, Eric's disappeared. He does seem to have a knack for that. Yeah, so I've noticed. Well, at least you got your mess back. Yes, it would seem that everything's where it should be. Well, 
I'm off. Ah, well, uh, good. So you're off. Uh, have you written your report yet? It'll be on your desk in the morning, sir. Thank you. I, uh... Yes, sir. Nothing. You won't be mentioning anything outside the case, will you? Excuse me? In your report. Will anything of a personal nature about anyone be making it into your report? A personal nature, sir. Don't be coy, Fraser. I'm not trying to be, sir. You know damn well I had communication with the curator outside of office hours. Well, n no, actually. I, I wasn't aware that, I mean, Look, I mean. I had one perfectly innocent lunch with a criminal. All right, one lunch and one dinner. And a couple of drinks, I think. Huh. <sighs> Never mind. Do what you will. Uh, sir. What? Quite honestly, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh. Good. Thank you. Yes. What? Oh, please. Well, I have to hand it to you, Ray. You really know how to show a girl a good time. Different, but good. Hey, that's me. And just wait until you try this. Oh, Ray. But you're only going one way 